After over a decade of development, Blue Origin's big new Glenn rocket is finally on the launch pad for what could be its first flight soon. Some have expressed excitement about the event, holding out hope that BO could one day break SpaceX's monopoly. However, the reality is a bitter pill. Long ago, Elon Musk recognized and warned about serious problems inside the mindset of Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos. However, Jeff's huge ego prevented him from admitting it, and it ended up being a huge stumbling block to the success of his rocket company. Find out everything in today's episode. On the night of November 21st, Blue Origin shared a shocking image. Its long-awaited New Glenn rocket finally went vertical at Launch Complex 36. This is the first time we've ever seen this. And with it all being completed, a launch very soon is expected this month. As the launch date approaches, Blue Origin is increasingly excited to share updates on its rocket launch preparations. On November 13th, the company shared a photo of the two stages of its new Glenn rocket being joined together for the first time in the company's facility, near NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. GS-1 meets GS-2, the company wrote on X in a post accompanying the photo, in reference to the first GS-1 and second GS-2 stages of the new rocket. This follows the event on October 30th, when new Glenn's first stage, equipped with seven BE-4 engines, was rolled out to LC-36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. New Glenn is expected to make its maiden flight sometime in November, taking off from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which is next door to KSC. The flight will carry one of the company's new Blue Ring spacecraft on a National Security Space Launch Certification flight known as Dark Sky 1 and sponsored by the Defense Innovation Unit. According to the original plan, the Dark Sky 1 flight was intended to be on the second New Glenn flight in December, and the NASA Escapade CubeSat mission to Mars was on the New Glenn's first flight, previously scheduled for October 13. However, NASA later decided not to fuel the two satellites for the mission, as New Glenn was not going to make the tight launch window this fall. That decision helps to avoid potential cost overruns related to the rocket's development. Escapade has been rescheduled for spring 2025, and Blue Origin moved up New Glenn's second flight from December to November. Frankly, the second launch date seems puzzlingly soon, given that launch windows for Mars missions come along just once every 26 months. That's the interval on which Earth and the Red Planet align to allow efficient deep space travel. NASA did not disclose details of that alternative trajectory, including when the spacecraft would reach Mars. A launch would then be outside the traditional Mars launch window that is open this fall, but has not been available again for roughly two years. On the same day as BO's rocket going vertical at LC-36, there is a viral photo on X with the title, Elon Musk with Jeff Bezos. In the photo, Bezos and Musk are smiling and dining together at a restaurant. This rare photo was taken in 2004, when both men's space exploration ambitions were starting to heat up. While Bezos has yet to publicly address the meeting, Musk described their meeting to Christian Davenport, author of The Space Barons. Musk likened Bezos' rocket work to barking up the wrong tree. He also revealed that SpaceX had tested some of Bezos' ideas and they were all stupid. Elon even added, I actually did my best to give good advice, which he largely ignored. Twenty years later, Musk responded to that old photo by saying, How time flies. Although both Elon and Jeff are billionaires, their rocket companies started at about the same time. At present, the gap between SpaceX and Blue Origin has become very clear. While Blue Origin has still been struggling with its first orbital rocket, SpaceX has established a monopoly in the rocket industry with its operational Falcon 9 rocket. The vehicle has been in operation for 14 years and made a total of more than 400 launches, a record that has never been broken. The Falcon 9 rocket has become a workhorse for satellite launches, cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station, and crewed space flights.
its reliability and cost-effectiveness have made it the preferred choice for many commercial and government customers. An increasing launch cadence of Falcon 9 has helped the company to grow to 87% of the world's tonnage to orbit, an incredible number. And Elon Musk estimated that SpaceX might exceed 90% of all Earth payload to orbit later this year. Nevertheless, this dominance has raised concerns about a lack of competition in the industry, with some industry experts labeling it a monopoly. For that reason, with the first launch of BO's new Glenn, some hope that SpaceX's monopoly in space exploration will soon be broken. Blue Origin's incompetence compared to SpaceX, though, is a bitter pill for them. A Blue Origin executive said in 2018 as quoted, Blue is kind of lazy compared to SpaceX, citing the fact that the work environments between the two companies were different. At SpaceX, the very long hours are expected, and the burnout was part of their labor strategy. People are expected to work on vacations or not take them. By contrast, a 40-hour work week is very common in Blue. Another Blue Origin executive even suggested that the company's standard 40-hour work week wouldn't be enough to meet its ambitions. Another executive suggested, we need to talk about the time and effort personnel are spending to achieve our mission, adding, if we expect greater than 40 hours, let's clearly communicate that and evaluate personnel based on that guidance. Agreeing with this statement, SpaceX's Musk mentioned that, nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week and suggested that people would need to clock around 80 to more than 100 hours a week if they did. So, with a standard 40-hour work week, how can Blue Origin catch up to SpaceX? Yes, Jeff Bezos has used a familiar strategy, copycat. In fact, Blue Origin copied some features of SpaceX's rockets to apply to the development of New Glenn. New Glenn is Blue Origin's heavy lift booster rocket which the company plans to use for placing crewed and uncrewed payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. Like SpaceX's Falcon 9, New Glenn is a two-stage booster with a reusable first stage that, mission planners hope, will land vertically after stage separation. The vehicle consists of a reusable first stage powered by seven BE-4 engines, which use liquid oxygen and methane for propellant like SpaceX's Raptor rocket engines and an expendable second stage with two BE-3U engines, powered by liquid oxygen and hydrogen. Like Falcon 9, New Glenn's first stage contains engines that can be relit during descent to allow a soft landing, and the rocket has six extendable landing legs that deploy just before touchdown. Falcon 9's first stage has four legs. Blue Origin also plans for New Glenn to land on a mobile, sea-based platform, SpaceX, currently lands their rockets on drone ships. The current New Glenn landing platform ship, Jacqueline, named for Bezos' mother, measures an impressive 115 meters by 45 meters in size, larger than the platforms used by SpaceX. This ship replaces an earlier version of the Blue Origin mobile sea-based landing platform, also named Jacqueline. On the other hand, New Glenn has some notable advantages. It is bigger than Falcon 9. New Glenn 98 meters in height is taller than Falcon 9, and with a 7-meter diameter, its payload fairing is bigger than that of SpaceX's rocket. New Glenn can surpass Falcon 9 regarding payload capacity. If all goes as planned, New Glenn will be able to place a 45,360-kilogram payload into Earth orbit and a 6,800-kilogram payload on a trajectory to the moon. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 full thrust can carry 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit. However, I guarantee there is one thing Blue Origin will never be able to beat SpaceX in, and that is relentless rapid evolution. Jeff's team gets obsessed with getting things exactly right, while the Elon Musk team's spirit of not being afraid of risk and failure. This is clearly proven through the development and test of SpaceX's next-generation rocket, Starship. As the largest and most powerful rocket in the world, Starship is promised to launch more than 200 tons to LEO in the third version, four times larger than New Glenn. Starship version 3's power is up to 10,000 tons of force, which is much more powerful than New Glenn's 1,743 force. Not only powerful, 
Starship even promises to become a craze in space travel at an extremely cheap price tag, under $10 million cost per launch. This is thanks to its rapid and fully reusable ability. And in Elon Musk's words, the super heavy rocket is planned to return safely after launch and can be relaunched within an hour, a significant achievement for SpaceX. To make it happen, SpaceX developed a unique structure, the Mechazilla, which is dedicated to catching each stage of the Starship rocket. In Starship's Flight 5 in mid-October, SpaceX stunned the whole world by successfully catching the massive booster stage from its Starship rocket in a pair of robotic arms. This is truly a feat that no company has done before and now, and of course, including Blue Origin. SpaceX intends to replace all of its current vehicles, Falcon and Dragon, with Starship in six to eight years. At that point, I bet BO's new Glenn would only be online for a short time. Given that, Blue Origin's dream of catching up and beating SpaceX is unlikely to come true. The rivalry between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos became intense in 2013 when Elon Musk's SpaceX won out over Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin to take over the Kennedy Space Center's historic launch pad 39A, the starting point for many space missions. A few years later, they argued again about who was the first to launch a reusable rocket into space. In 2015, Bezos proudly tweeted about the successful launch and landing of the New Shepard rocket, calling it the rarest beast. Musk, however, sarcastically commented below that not quite rarest. According to him, SpaceX's Grasshopper rocket had already made six such flights in the past three years. In a 2016 interview, when asked about competing with other billionaires like Bezos in the rocket industry, Musk shrugged and replied, Jeff who? In 2019, Amazon announced plans to launch 3,236 small satellites into space to provide high-speed internet access around the world. This project has many similarities with another project that SpaceX has been implementing since late 2017. They launched rockets carrying Starlink satellites with the ambition of providing global internet coverage. When Musk learned about Amazon's plan, he did not hesitate to tag Bezos in the post and call the Amazon boss a copycat. In 2020, Musk once again called Bezos a copycat, linking to an article about Amazon's announcement of its acquisition of self-driving car startup Zoox. Bezos, for his part, has also made indirect criticisms of Musk's goal of sending humans to Mars. Their companies also compete on a number of fronts, from patents to NASA contracts to access to launch pads. In June 2024, his rocket company, Blue Origin, filed its latest legal action against Elon Musk's SpaceX, this time requesting that an airspace regulator limit the number of launches the Musk-led company can perform in Florida. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.